Hey, what's happening you guys? I'm Landon. Welcome back to another most amazing top 10 video. I'm so glad you guys came back. But the question is, have you guys subscribed yet? Okay, so let me start off asking you guys, have you ever lost something or had something stolen from you? Let me know in the comment section below because I do read all of your guys' comments, I promise. And also, what top 10s do you guys want to see next? So let's jump right into our list. This is the top 10 craziest robbery stories. Exploding its way into the number 10 spot, we have the Kohler Bomb Bank Robbery. You won't believe this actually happened. Back in 2003, Ryan Douglas Wells, a middle-aged pizza delivery man, walked into a bank in Erie, Pennsylvania. And he passed to a teller a note that he wrote on it saying, Work fast to fill the bag of $250,000. You have 15 minutes. Let's start. He then lifted up his shirt, revealing a bomb dangling from his neck. The teller handed him all that she can collect, and that amount was about $8,702. Um, where did the $2 come from? And then Brian took it and walked out of the bank. 15 minutes later, state troopers caught up to him, and they were able to cuff him. While Brian proclaimed that he was forced to commit the robbery, and the bomb around his neck would soon detonate. So the thing is, he wasn't lying about this. The bomb did go off, killing Brian, and detectives later found evidence that Brian was following a complex set of instructions. I mean, god damn. If completed successfully, well, he gets to live. This is almost like out of the Saw movies. All right, so flying its way into the number nine spot, we have the Vassburga helicopter robbery, which took place in Sweden back in 2009. The target of the robbery was a G4S security company, which held $146 million inside, and it was all cash. A gang of at least seven gang members stole a helicopter from a nearby hangar to fly it on top of this building and smash through reinforced glass. With a sledgehammer, they then blasted their way into the safes and began looting bags of money via a rope. Cops were on the scene within minutes, but they were delayed due to metal rods being laid on the streets previously by the gang. Miraculously, the cops were able to capture one of the crooks the same day of this heist. And from there, police identified and arrested the other six who were involved. And all seven men are now serving time in prison behind bars. Okay, so now in at number eight, we have what could have been the greatest heist in history if they got away with it. And we're talking about the Millennium Dome raid. The year was 2000 and London had just opened their doors to the Millennium Dome, also known as the O2 Arena, which is one of the larger exhibition spaces in the world. For the grand opening on display, there was a world-class diamond exhibit and there was a group of skilled thieves dressed as construction workers with their intent to steal $500 million of diamonds and jewels. They unleashed smoke bombs into the exhibit, wearing gas masks. They smashed their way through glass grabbing the jewels and they actually had a speedboat waiting outside for them for their getaway. Thankfully, the London Metropolitan police had already figured out their plan and they had placed fake jewelry on display. So the thieves were arrested on site and the Millennium Dome had a grand opening unlike any other. Okay, so although those men were captured, in at number seven, lucky seven, we have the D.B. Cooper robbery. And his robbery actually baffles investigators 40 years after the heist took place. On November 24th in 1971, a man known only as D.B. Cooper hijacked a flight summer overhead of Portland and Seattle. He told all 36 passengers and crew that inside his brief there was a bomb and he demanded $200,000 and several life jackets. These were delivered and then his next request was for a plane to drive low and slow and make their way over to Mexico. As the pilot changed paths to coincide the request, D.B. Cooper jumped from the plane with all the money in his possession. He has never been seen or heard from again. The FBI contends that there is no way he could have survived, yet they released an updated composition sketch of the man in 2007 in hopes of closing this case. Okay, so keeping the history books open for number six, we have the Great Train Robbery from 1963. A Royal Mail train was making its journey between Glasgow and London, England during the early hours of the morning when 15 robbers led by Bruce Reynolds attacked the train. The gang didn't fire a single bullet, but yet they managed to stop the train and unload 2.6 million British pounds, which in nowadays is equivalent to about $100 million. Five days after the robbery, the gang's hideout was discovered and the police were able to lift fingerprints from a Monopoly game board. One by one, each of the 15 thieves were identified and they were captured. Some of whom have became great heroes amongst outlaws and criminals due to the fact that a robbery of that size had never happened before and they almost got away with it. Okay, so digging our way into the number five spot, 
We have the French bank vault tunnelers, who got rich in Paris. Construction work was about to begin in a bank, and this was in central Paris on a popular road known as Avenue de la Opera. So these thieves decided to move into the building next door. They spent their days digging a hole through the cellars, allowing themselves entry into the vault. When they emerged inside the bank, they tied up two unsuspected guards and spent several hours emptying out safety deposit boxes. And when they were done in there, they set fire to the vault, which triggered the anti-fire system flushing away any evidence that could link any of these people to the crime that they have just committed. So they were able to disappear without a trace. With safety deposit boxes, the clients are given confidentiality to what is inside. So the sum of what was stolen is still unknown. Okay, so now in at number four, we have what is being known as the heist of the century. We're talking about the Antwerp diamond heist. So this went down in 2003. A common by the name of Leonardo Notre Bartolo moved in beside the Antwerp diamond center in Belgium three years prior to the crime and passed himself off as a diamond merchant in order to gain credibility to the center. The vault was thought to be impenetrable. It was protected by 10 layers of security, including infrared heat sensors, Doppler radar, a magnetic field, a seismic sensor, and a lock with 100 million possibility combinations. Nevertheless, Leonardo learned all that he could and orchestrated a robbery of loose diamonds, gold, and other jewelries valued at at least $100 million. Most of the men that was involved in this heist got away, but for Leonardo, he had stopped to eat a sandwich. This was during the heist, and DNA evidence linked him to the crime. Busted. If you guys think $100 million is a lot of money, try $6.6 billion, which went missing by the US Army while they were invading Iraq. I mean, what happened? And this clocks in to number three. In 2004, between $10 billion to $20 billion worth of cash was airshipped to Iraq intended to finance reconstruction projects. As the accounts began tallying up, the bills totaled $6.6 .6 billion. And all of this was like unaccounted for. Stuart Bowen, the Special Inspector General for Iraq Reconstruction, called it the largest theft of funds in national history. The Pentagon confirmed that the money had likely been stolen and auditors came to the same conclusion as well. The complete lack of investigatory results as well as the manner in which everyone just seemed to forget about it, makes this one of the strangest robberies of all time. Up next, in at number two, we have another unsolved mystery. And we're talking about the Isabel Stewart Garner Museum heist, which took place on St. Patrick's Day back in 1990. So two thieves dressed up as a Boston police officer entered the museum. They stole 13 works of art, including a Rembrandt and Monet, including a number of paintings by Degas. Those names might not mean a lot to you, but the value of all these paintings was about $500 million. These work of art was never recovered and empty frames now hang in the museum in hopes that one day someone will come back and return it. I'm not sure if that's ever gonna happen. But this is one of the greatest unsolved mysteries in American history. All right, so we've all made it into the number one spot, and this one is a doozy. I'm talking about the Thomas Blood and the Crown Jewels of England. The year was 1671. Thomas Blood was an Irish assassin who decided to try his hand at robbery. And he set his eyes on one of the world's biggest prize. And we're talking about the crown jewel that was locked up in the Tower of London surrounded by guards. Thomas Blood hired a prostitute to play the role of his wife and a young boy as well, who played the role of his nephew. He discovered that the keeper of the jewels, Talbot Edwards, was looking to marry off his daughters and set up a meeting to introduce his nephew to Talbot. The meeting took place in London Tower and once the crown jewels were in sight, Thomas knocked out Talbot and his team stuffed the crown jewels down their pants and then they attempted to make a run for it. Fortunately, they were tackled to the ground by guards. Typically a move like this would cost you your head, but King Charles II was so amused with this story of the heist, he banished Thomas Blood and he graciously left in a hurry. Well, there you guys have it. That was the top 10 greatest heist in history. Let me know if I've missed any in the comment section below. That's it for me. I'll see you guys in the next video. So let me know how I did in this video. If you liked it, hit that like button just below me. And also subscribe. That way, as soon as I make a video, you guys will be notified right away. And if you guys want two more videos, there's some right beside me. You guys can click on them and get caught up with the week. Okay, bye.